So thank you very much for coming for this talk. Um, so, um, so I'm very excited living in this uh, super multidisciplinary uh, age like uh, we can bring different technology, different viewpoints together to do research. Um, so this is, in this talk, I'm going to just pro provide one view from the deep learning side how to uh, enable computers to understand uh, emotions, uh, um, sentiments, and uh, stances. And hopefully, if, we, if computer can understand, there's many applications can be done. Um, so Mario Minsky is a pioneer in artificial intelligence. Uh, in one of his book, Emotion Machine, he asked this question, can a machine fall in love? So I think this is probably uh, too far reaching because uh, I think, it, but this I think I do think this is a good topic to debate. Uh, I but I, I I myself have a very bad experience around this because uh, uh, some like Christmas Eve, I my wife and I drove to to downtown to to spend the night together. But when we start for some reason we stop this topic, and then you can imagine on the highway we start to the debate could become more hot and hot. Then finally it's we decide to go back. <laughs> We have no mood to, to further go to the downtown to enjoy the, 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 the night together. So that's, this can, I mean, this can lead to many very, um, very uh, uh, hot debate. But again, so if we leave this debate uh, away today, uh, if we just think about if a computer can understand emotion, so there's many applications that can be done. For example, you can, if a computer can understand the sentiment, emotion, the stance, uh, you can track the sentiment towards politicians, movies, products. And there's a lot of security applications. When I, wor when I was working with my uh, previous uh, employee, uh, National Research Council Canada, uh, there's a lot of project with, uh, with the Department of Defense um, on using uh, this technology. The third is actually you can detect happiness and the well-being of human beings when that, whenever they write tweets, write uh, even uh, many different posters, you can detect something from there. And also you can improve customer relationship, um, measure the impact of uh, activist movement through the text generation in social media or identify what invokes strong sentiment in people in, in, in the social media. And try to, you can also try to improve automatic dialogue systems, because nowadays you can talk with Alexa, but uh, the, those uh, chatbots, they may have emotion right, in the future, so we, we have to be careful, because there's a, or, also a hot debate about if you use improper training data, you're probably going to train a chatbot which has negative emotion, which is not going to be good. So uh, it can probably also improve the automatic tuning system and also detect how many people, how people can use emotion bearing words and a metaphor to persuade uh, other peoples. So there's many, uh, probably you can think about more than I, can, I could today. But again, so the talk today is how we can enable computer to model this or to understand this in general. So it's still a very, very, very challenging question. So, I'm going to start from uh, how to model word because a uh, word is a is a basis, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a foundation for more complicated uh, concepts. So how we are going to enable com computer to understand what love is? So um, there's two fundamental questions uh, uh, with regard to if you really want a computer to model social media, we we, we need to ask a two questions: How a computer can understand the meaning of a word? And how, if a computer can understand a meaning word like love, so how computer can combine um, this concept and to understand a more longer span of text, like uh, the whole sentence or even documents or whole messages uh, posted on, on the social media. So these are two problems. One, the first is called a word representation. We need to find some representation for word. And the second problem is called semantic composition. We need to not only learn the meaning of the word, but also compose them together to form a more complete concept. So my talk is going to start from these two uh, problems, and then we are going to come back to talk about social media um, um, more specifically. So starting from how to model love. So remember, so for when human beings do not know what a concept means, they, they check the dictionary, right? But we cannot teach computer with dictionary yet because uh, uh, you can say the definition of love have many aspects. One of the definition is affections based on admiration, um, common interest, those kind of things. So those concepts are also ab quite abstract. So computer, if a computer cannot understand this, then computer cannot understand love. So um, this is not a way to to train computer to to enable computer to understand those concepts yet. Um, so the question is like again. So it's because love. Uh, admiration, satisfaction are entangled with each other. If a computer can, uh, cannot understand one of them, it's a computer cannot, uh, there's le less chance a computer can understand other, others. 
So it seems for like anger, fear, hunger. If a computer cannot understand one of them, then it's hard to understand another. So basically, we cannot rely on dictionary like human being used every day to 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 train computer. So let's go back to some ideas from Marvin Minsky himself. Again, Marvin Minsky is a pioneer in artificial intelligence. He, he, in his book, he said, okay, probably when we model anger, so we're probably going to use uh, some variables to model it. When, you, when, we, when we model fear, we probably use another set of variables. And those two, two concepts share some variables. Like, in, for example, you can consider each variable is a neuron in your, in your, in your body. Um, and also hunger and the thirst share some of them, but they are different concepts. So that means we probably we can think about use variable or use a, use vectors to, to to model them, right? So we can probably use a, a set of vector to model this, and another set of vector to model this. So nowadays the deep learning is all based on this kind of a, called distributed representation. So basically from the world level or from if you model image, so everything is in vector. So that's why I think uh, um, um, in Toronto the different name his lab as a vector institute. So basically everything is represented as a vector. So I'm going to right away to introduce how to how we can learn these vectors. But again, so uh, the key idea is uh, it's called distributed representation. Like each variable here responds to different concepts. And each concept is represented by different variables. So the information is, is represented distributedly in different uh, variables. Um, so if that means every, every concept here is going to rep be represented by a vector. I'm going to talk about how to learn this in, with deep learning. So how to learn the representation for word? There's a slogan years ago, it's called, uh, you shouldn't know a word by the company that keeps. That means you can learn the meaning of a word by uh, the context of the words. So that means actually the simplest ways is actually whenever you get a word, you want to model word love. So you just grab, you just grab a huge amount of corpus from the, from, from, the, from the internet and just grab the context of the, of the, of the word love. And then you can represent, represent each word as you can get a matrix. So each word, you have a, a context word. Like love is going to more likely to happen together with, uh, uh, with a book, with probably uh, a restaurant, other, other concepts. So again, each row here is a, is a concept you want to represent. Each column is a word that co more likely co uh, co occurred with this word. So in that way, so you can get a matrix. Um, again, so each row is a word, the, the target word you want to represent. And each column is a collocated context word. And then you can use dimensionality reduction to reduce the dimension because you are going to get a huge, lot, uh, large number of columns. And then you are going to do uh, human, uh, the dimensionality reductions to reduce the dimensionality to dimensions to whatever you want. For example, usually people use 100, 200 dimension to re represent one word. So in this way, you can actually get a representation for word. So each word now can be represented as, as a, a vector. Uh, again, so in extreme case, you can reduce the dimensions. To each word is represented by two vec two, a vector of two, or, or two, two variables. Uh, you can represent that. So if you represent each word with only two variables, then you can get an image, a, a picture like this. So again, this is two-dimensional space. So you, if you reduce the dimension to two dimensions, you can say the word much, little, less, more are together. Uh, another second are together, uh, but and because are together. But the bad thing of this, this kind of technology is they, can, they are going to put new and old together, right? Put a, a, put a high and a low together. So the reason they do this is because, like much and little, this is not good for sentiment analysis because the sentiment with no love is different, so different from bad. The reason this technology put the uh, contract word together is because the word bad and the, book, the, the word bad and good, they have similar context. So the first step you want to enable computer to understand the sentiments in, in the internet. If you want to, okay, say whether uh, if, uh, if, if Joe should re write a review for about this restaurant or this uh, resource, um, he, he used some words. So we need to know, that computer know the word good is different from the word bad. So that's the first thing we want to do if we want a computer to understand. So if some guy said, okay, uh, I don't like this government or I love this government. So you, if computer need to understand the, the love and the hate is different. So the first technology you need to do is like try, to with, uh, try to basically pull those two words apart from each other. Like uh, if you want to do sentiment analysis, you want to, to, to pull the high and the low away from each other and also pull, to pull the, the new and old 
from each other. So I'm going to start from these viewpoints to talk about a specific technology that can, can do this. So let's re revisit the word implementation for contrast meanings. So again, the computer cannot tell the difference between love and hate. And it's because of, of the context of those words are similar to each other. So that's why uh, they cannot learn from automatically from the corpus, from the data. Um, so the technology we use, but this learning this contrast meaning is super important because uh, again, sentiment, emotion, stance detection all depend on this. And also in addition to that, if computer need to read, read the books, computer need need to understand this as well. If a computer need, uh, there's a technology called a reading, reading comprehension. We give computer books, a computer can learn from it. So again, so when, uh, this is a very important technology because uh, recently uh, some, some journalist uh, interviewed G. Bill Gates to say, if you live your life uh, again, so what are you going to do? So he said, if I, if I live again, so if I'm 20 years old, I'm going to, to start, uh, start up a company which teach computer to understand the knowledge in text to learn from that. So again, so reading comprehension is to enable computer to learn from a text. Uh, this tech, if, if we computer know contrast meaning, computer is going to know do have ability to do inference reasoning, which is very important part for human intelligence. Like for example, we said the house price in Halifax rose almost 10% last year. We said another news said Halifax house price decreased slightly in the past year. This is contradiction. So computer can learn the contra contradiction entailment, those kind of relationships logical relationships. Again, so contrast meaning is uh, one uh, dimension of semant uh, semantics that uh, we hope computer can learn better. So the model we proposed is to not only use the data, but also use human knowledge, it's like uh, um, the, 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 the uh, thesaurus. And uh, then we, we try to enforce the models to like, uh, again, so we try to propose mathematical models, which like uh, uh, the similar word like uh, uh, love and like should be put, to, put together. Unrated words are word are far from each other, and the farthest should be contrasting word. So we try to encourage this. So when we design the mathematic model, we try to max a, 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 a function which can enforce the model to do this. So again, I'm not going to go to the details of this, uh, this, uh, this, 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 this formula, but again, so if you enforce to maximize this, uh, this, 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 this function, it's going to enforce um, the contrast, the con two contrast word, their distance. If bigger than irrelevant word pairs by some margin beta. Okay, this formula is trying to enforce the similar word, similar word like a like and a love. It's going to be closer to each other than a pair of irrelevant words by a larger distance margin alpha. So we use this to enforce this. So this is uh, some results before we did, like uh, for Microsoft research, they get uh, result like this in a benchmark database. Uh, and Columbia University and IBM get this, and Toyota Technological Institute get this. So if we use this model to learn from both human knowledge and the data from online data, we can get like a push the performance to 0 0.992. So that's a, that's a state of art by that time, which is uh, four years ago. So remember now, if we computer already represent the world, so this is a parsing tree of a sentence. So if a computer, each leaf, each leaves over here are um, words. And this is root or sentence, the whole sentence. So this is a parse structure. So uh, if, word, if computer already understands somehow a little bit about what word is by using vector to represent it, then we hope computer can represent every phrases and also the whole sentence. Right? So uh, this is called semantic composition. We want to learn from the parts to the whole uh, by modeling the complicated functions. Like uh, this function is not a Gaussian function, it's not a simple, simple function, it's a quite complicated functions. So once we can re represent a word, a sentence as a vector, uh, which uh, like Jeffrey Hinton, which is a professor in University of Toronto, is called, called this a uh, thought vector. So once we can, can, can get a thought vectors, we can actually do sentiment analysis, stance classification, do many different things. Because once we get this, we can, we can right away run a classifier to classify the sentiments of a whole sentence. Again, so you can also use this representation to do many other things. So the next part of the talk, I'm going to talk about a semantic composition, which again is learning from part to get the meaning of the whole. So this 
is based on the principle of compositionality. The basically the comp principle of compositionality says the meaning of a whole is a function of the meaning of the parts. And some of the version of this definition also involve syntax. Some something some some definition also have one more sentence say uh, uh, based on some structures. But again, this is a more general definition. So remember, this does not only happen in language; it happens in different places. Whenever you are hearing the music, right, each music notes uh, do not carry too much sense. But once they are put together, they are become more powerful and more powerful. That means the whole, the meaning of the whole, whole, the whole song, um, it makes some meaning, it's have some meaning for you. But each notes do not have meaning because they are again. So um, because the, the the music notes are just it's not random put together. They have some function regular uh, regularities. You need to model that regularities. It's or this also uh, happening in vision, like a, a natural sense uh, composed of the meaningful components. For example, if you want to learn what's the concept of a house, you're probably going to take care whether there's a window, there's a door, there's a garage, something like that. So the the principle of compositionality is not just in um, in, in languages in different places. Actually. Um, Compositionality is regarded by many as a fundamental component of intelligence. And there is a paper published from a group of researchers from MIT said, um, if we want to build artificial intelligence finally, there are several things we, ha we cannot model very well yet. One is compositionality. So the second is uh, intuitive physics, basically com common sense. The third is learning to learn. You need to learn what you learn from one domain to another domain. The fourth is like uh, reasoning uh, causality models. So uh, again, so I'm going to start from here. I'm going to touch the other part of only a little bit today. So semantic composition, remember, go back to the sentiment analysis. If we say something's good, it's good. If we say something very good, we know what that means. If we add one more word, not very good, right? Not very good is not, does not necessarily mean very bad, right? Not very good means still, probably still good. So that means, uh, Whenever we come put all together, the not is unlike the, the lot not in logic. Like a not there is just a reverse everything. But here not not necessarily reverse everything. That means the function from here to here is some is quite a complicated functions. So we need to model that function. So um, this is just a few more examples. Uh, this is one phrase. One phrase is, is one dot somewhere here. So if we put all these neg 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 negated phrases from the logic corpus, we can put many of each, each phrase, like not very good, is a one dot over here. And very good is the sentiment of very good is plotted over here. So if it's very positive, it's 0 0.5. It's neutral, it's 0. It's, if it's negative, it's over here. So this is a, the x coordinator is a, is a, is a, is a, is a sentiment for, for, for this part. And the y coordinator is sentiment for the whole part. So again, so if not reverse everything, it should be along this line, right? It change, it change positive 5 to negative 5 here. It's positive 5 for x and negative 5 for, for y. So again, so if not, it's, it's, it, uh, if not, it's, uh, it's functional like uh, what lot in logic. It should be in that slide. But we can see the real case is not this case. That means the modeling this is a, it's quite a nonlinear function you need to model. So that means even a one layer composition. We're talking about a tree, but even that we just took a one layer of this composition can be quite complicated. Again, so if you want to enable com computer to model uh, like a George's uh, uh, comments about a wine restaurant, they must need to understand this. But it's very complicated. So uh, Barbara Party is a famous uh, semantic uh, uh, researcher. So he put many more examples to see how um, how uh, how com composition can be complicated. Like senator, former senator. So if you talk about a former senator, he probably cannot make a decision right now, uh, right? So if you want to ask a question about former senator, if you do not know former senator, it's not in it's not a part of senator. So you probably don't understand that. So that means the composition of the word former and center can be complicated. And also gent, small gent, and short bar basketball player. So there's many examples, it's very hard to model. Basically, we're not, I'm not a linguist. We, I'm trying to model those from the viewpoint of machine learning, because we believe once a computer can model those, computer can model many other things. So that's why we develop algorithm for this. One, one motivation for me is, is develop algorithm for this, but that, the algorithm can be applied to different places. So again, so we propose a model. Again, so we propose a model to do composition over trees. Um, so 
uh, you can say the model can be applied to images. Like uh, again, the house is composed of different parts and the uh, and windows and the roof. And also for a, a sentence, it's composed of uh, phrases. And the leaf, it's a, it's a word. So you can see this sentence is, this film does not care about cleverness. Basically, the, this person have a negative opinion about this movie. Uh, so we want to um, build a model which composes the, the, the meaning of these two, uh, two words together and compose them. And finally, we keep doing this and get the meaning of the whole sentences as a vector representation. So once we get this vector, we can do sentiment analysis. And we can also do sentiment analysis over every phrase over here as well. So the functions, that we, the model we propose is published in the International Conference of Machine Learning. Um, basically, again, so it's a non-short-term non -short, non memory over tree structures. So, um, so again, this is details. I'm going to ignore that. But the key idea is like a, for each, each node, you're going to consider two child. And this is a, you, you, you save some memory over here. The, the memory is going to consider this child, this child, but also the, the history, the descendant of this child. So it's going to consider a long history. So the powerful side of this long, long short term memory is like a, whenever you get a meaning or represent a meaning over here in this phrase, you can still remember long history somewhere over here. But the model is going to learn how to, how to remember that. So if we propose this model at that time, it's, a, it's get the best mod, uh, performance on Stanford Sentiment Tree, tree Bank, uh, better than all other models. So again, so um, this is called a semantic composition. I hope you already get some uh, sense about this. Um, one problem I want to mention, there's many issues about this. One issue is like a long composition IT, like a kick the bucket. The meaning of kick the bucket cannot, learn, cannot be learned from each of these words. And this is idiom, right? So there's some soft cases in this, like a must try. If you say, okay, this is a restaurant you must try, you, you, you basically say that you put a positive uh, sentiment towards it. But actually, uh, the, 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 the positive meaning of must try, the must do not have a positive meaning. Try do not have positive meaning. So if you want to model this, you cannot model from, 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 the, from, the, from descendant to compose. You cannot model that. You have to use some knowledge you learn from outside. So this knowledge can be learned from the dictionary, right? This is in the uh, idiom. Um, it's, in, it's, it's idiom is in, uh, in the dictionary. This you, can, you cannot, it's not in idioms uh, dictionary, so you have to learn from large copper, from the, from, from the, from the internet. So I'm going to uh, briefly talk about this, how to learn this from social media later. Because we have like a emot emot emoticon, so emoticon is going to help us to learn this. Um, so again, to, to consider uh, compo compo composition, compo composable semantics and non-composable semantics, we have design models to uh, neural network models. Again, so before the models look, tree model looks like, like this. So we are going to expand each neuron over here to, cons to, this, to this part. And in this part, the neuron is going to consider the composition, compositional semantics from the descendant. And also consider the, the whole things. If you can learn the whole thing like a this, if this is a kick the bucket, if you know the meaning of the kick the bucket as a whole, you can also input it over here. So the neural network is going to learn, decide which one it's going to pick the meaning from. So some, some of them is softer. It's, can, you can learn some from the, from the, from the bottom or, or know some from the outside. So again, so you, we design a lot of models, to, three models to do this. To, uh, we just put one model over here. The model here is going to use a standard layer of a neural network. And also we are going to use a tensor network. Basically, the idea of tensor network is going to learn the inter interaction between I3, E3. Again, E3 is a meaning as a whole. The I3 is learned from its child. So we are going to learn the combination. The tensor part is going to learn the combination uh, more interactively. So we add this part. So we have more and more about this. But I just give you um, some ideas about how the model is designed to learn this. Again, all the weights are, can be trained with, uh, with the training data. So again, so this is an experiment setup. Uh, we still use a Stanford Sentiment Train Bank. Um, but again, so we are going to learn uh, the meaning of must try uh, from a large corpus, use an emoticon. I'm going to talk about that later. So this is performance. Um, basically, at that, that time, so we get, also get best results on this. So again, so we talk about semantic composition. This is the second uh, part of my talk. Uh, again, so uh, we, have a, uh, we have a tutorial there to, talk, to summarize our research and uh, other people's research two years ago uh, in, at ACL. Um, let's go back, come back to social media text specifically. 
Again, so so far we talk about uh, we want to we have ambitious goals to build a model which can teach computer to understand the concept and the composition. Uh, back to social media text, we have, we also worked on this uh, for several years. Uh, social media text, including many things like uh, when we define this, include tweets, uh, Facebook posts, and also blog, uh, customer reviews, SMS. SMS message. The reason we put this all together is because all of this message in, is called informal language. Unlike uh, the journalist writing the book, it, this language is quite informal. So this is one thing. But why uh, this is a key? I think uh, uh, the audience here has more reason than I have, than I have today. Like uh, why we, why uh, modeling this is important. Um, but basically, one reason is because it, we have a large vol volume of them. Like uh, uh, every day, we have 500. Uh, meanings of tweets posted every day. So there's a lot of data you can you can a lot of information you can you can you can you can get from from those data. Um, again, so the sheer uh, common uh, property of this data is informal languages, and there's a lot of abbreviation, abbreviation and shorten, shortening, and it's a lot of vocabulary, a wider array of topics. And there's a lot of noises, which is like sparing, uh, sparing uh, mistakes and creative sparing, like a cool, you really write a cool in this way. <laughs> and um, also, this is a, you have to more consider this when you are building a model, because it's quite an informal thing. Um, another thing is you have to use uh, rich information available from social media, like I said, emoticon. Uh, if you people put an emoticon there, uh, you can calculate the mutual information between emoticon and many other phrases, and you can say if some phrases is more likely to co-occur with uh, with emoti positive emoticon, probably that 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 phrase is likely to be positive. But again, you need to design a model to consider negation as well. So there's a lot of hashtag over here you can use, and uh, you can there's a, a capital information layer like uh, you can use like a must try right. This is really what you must try. If somebody emphasizes this, when they speak, you use prosody to do this, like increase the pitch. But for, for, for text, they, 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 they make another layer of, 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 of difference here. So again, so this is a, a, some difference of social media text is different from the traditional written text. Um, so to analyze the social media uh, text, there's usually three level of task. The first level is message level sentiment analysis. We basically, have, you're, if you are given a tweet uh, post, uh, you are going to let computer judge whether it's positive or negative, or what's the emotion like? It's a surprise, or it's a um, it's it's different emotion like a, like a joy. So different sentiment emotions, and there's a freeze level. Since it's a, we, I'm going to care about one phrase in this context. I'm going to give you an example. So there's also aspect level. So this is a, a different. Subtasking social media uh, sentiment analysis and, and social media text. So this is term level. Like uh, remember, terms is not necessary to be have only one uh, sentiment because uh, again, depend on text. If you say the plot of the uh, of this uh, suspense movie is so unpredictable, I really joined. This is uh, positive. If you say the performance of our soccer team is unpredictable, um, it's mm, more likely to be negative. So you want to determine the sentiments of terms. Uh, um, within the text. So this is sentiment level uh, analysis, term level. So aspect level is like, a, a, I write this review, the sushi of this restaurant was great, but we had to wait 20 minutes to be seated. So that basically means uh, I'm positive on the food itself, uh, but I'm negative on service, a little bit negative on service. So aspect level is going to care about uh, your, um, your sentiments towards some aspects of the of the of the of the of the social media post, um, there's a there's a evaluation platform for all semantic related tasks. It's called Semivale. It's quite famous in the in this area. So yeah, so I, I'm a co-organizer co for last year and this year. Uh, so they provide a benchmark to evaluate the state of art of all three types of sentiments, but not just this. They, uh, this year, we have a task there to help to to test the computer whether the computer can understand the common sense or not. Um, so, like a counterfactual, if I if I, I did not come to Queens three years ago, what's going to happen? Like we put a sentence to uh, to ask computer judge whether this is counterfactual or not. So again, so this Semivale is a platform to ev to evaluate different problem in, uh, to help computer to understand semantics. So in this task, there's a, the several years uh, they are 
there's uh, some very uh, populated, popular tasks which focus on sentiment analysis for social media. So um, for all these three tasks, again, so I skip this because uh, uh, I think uh, uh, in all these years our system uh, we build is uh, ranked top, uh, the first place in all these competitions. Uh, I skip this, um, but again, so I just summarize how we achieve the state of art. So the first technology we are going to use definitely is to collect a lot of data from, from social media. Once you collect a lot of data from social media, you can actually um, to use emoticons to teach your model, to, pre to train your model to know which phrases or which is likely to be positive. So this is critical for the, for the, for the task. So you will use a, a point-wise mutual information to train this. Again, so we have three hours tutorial about how to do this, but again, if you just want, want two, two page summaries, this is two page summary. One, the first page is we, we're going to uh, use uh, a lot of data um, from social media. Basically use some, some annotations like uh, emoticons, hashtag to help the model, to train the model. The second we need to model negation, we already talked about it earlier, so we need to, uh, to, to model negation. This is very, you can, in general you can think about it, it's a, it's very complicated um, function you need to model. And also, we also model some semantic roles, like who feels what sentiment towards which parties. So we also want to move, move, model who, not only just sentiment itself. So again, so this is a several components that we put into the system. So, so today we talk about, I talk about a little bit about um, representation and compositionality. Again, so we start from representation, and then we talk a little bit about compositionality. Um, again, so the reason here is like, uh, it's, uh, if there's a ways we can uh, think more common interesting problems, so we can probably explore together. Again, so I'm, I myself are very uh, super excited with, uh, with this uh, interdisciplinary settings or researches. Um, so, um, but again, so uh, there's a paper published by a group of uh, MIT researchers. They said, okay, so far deep learning is doing a good job, but deep learning still cannot solve compositionality very well. Um, the reasoning is cannot be solved very, very well. So the US government have a big project, like a five years huge project on doing common sense reasoning. Um, and the third is model common sense. Uh, the third is learning to learn. So again, so the challenge is because all these problems entangled with each other, you cannot separate them. Some, sometimes you have to model them together. So I'm, uh, I just uh, I so today's talk I'm focusing on representation and compositionality and uh, give some example about social media. So like what's spe the specificity of a social media? But whenever you get, get a general model, you can apply them to the social media. But you need to care about these two characteristics of which social media text. One is informal things, uh, those things. The second is that you have more uh, supervising signals from social media, like uh, so emoticons you can use. Um, I'm going to very briefly talk about the other part of the work which is related to this. Again, all those problems are entangled with each other. So we also do research on uh, reasoning inference uh, for, uh, for text and also uh, common sense uh, things. Um, so just to very briefly talk about this, uh, just the quick to check the time I have. Um, so, um, so for reasoning, uh, for representation and composition, we did uh, some work uh, for reasoning and inference. We also do some work in common sense part. For reasoning, I just give some example. If you want to talk with uh, your Alexa, like uh, um, in, in, at your home, you have a chat box. Um, like I bought those for my kids, so you can talk to them. But they can only talk about the simple things like what's the weather tomorrow, uh, set alarm. Um, but really, the reason is uh, you can still not talk with computer over here. Suppose computer is going to be smarter, smarter in the future. Uh, the reason you cannot compose uh, one reason is because computer cannot do reasoning. For example, if we, if computer know Tony bought a Mazda three yesterday and it has has been very excited. If you, comp if you ask computer, does Tony own a Mazda 3? Uh, computer do not know this. So the reason is because computer do not know buy means O. But, but, but like for human beings, it's super intuitive. Again, so for many of these reasons, I mean, uh, even like uh, every day, like uh, you talk about joke, if you think about for each, many of these joke, you, you, it invo involves like a re reasoning and inference. So my previous colleagues, to, to, uh, Tony has uh, many work on this. Um, there's another example from image. It's like a, this is a parachute, it's not a backpack. So if you ask uh, what's likely going to happen next. So it's, yeah, yeah, like, like this is a, like a, a kind of a joke, so you can everyone understand this. But uh, again, so if you ask computer, computer do not understand because they do not know the reasoning and the common sense in between. So there's a more complicated situations like uh, for finance application. 
this is the problem we are focusing on now. It's a last year all company pool in NASDAQ saw a cost glow more than expected, even after adjusting for inflation. So this is, if this is a, if, if we know this is true, then we should be inferred like a Google in the pool reported the cost increase. It's very likely this is going to be true. Again, we are trying to train the model. Uh, if we tell a computer this, computer should understand this. So again, so we try to train a model that's to, to detect whether P uh, in tail edge or they are contradict or they are no relationship. Again, so if a computer can do this, computer computing can do many things. Remember nowadays, for security reasons, many many company, many party put the fake news online. So they put some fake news online online. So if your computer can understand the contradiction, computer can use this to validate the, the, the news is fake or not. Right? So so again, for we propose model this basically this ESA model is a quite a standard baseline now used by by peoples. So we, we put the model, again, um, I'm not going to go to the details, but basically the model is going to focus first to do the local inference, like so to focus on local reasoning uh, in relationship between all and the sun, and the local relationship between Toronto and Ontario. So if something happened in Toronto is true, then probably we can see that's happening in Ontario as well. Right? So the local inference is going to focus on local relationship. And then the global inference is going to compose them to, to find the global, global relationship between those. And also we work on common sense a little bit. Uh, so again, so uh, when, whenever tuning uh, pro proposes tuning task to say whether a computer is smart enough, he do the, to propose this, exam, uh, this task, task like uh, if you put a curtain in front of you in a computer, at, back, at the back of the curtain there's a computer, there's a human beings. If you keep talking to them, if you cannot tell which is which, then that means computer is smart as human beings. But again, so before we test that, uh, that's a super challenge. There's another very famous task recently proposed. It's called uh, um, WS, WS Winograd Scammer. So basically, they, they formulate the common sense problem in this simple form. If we ask a John cannot lift his thumb because he's too heavy, who is too heavy? <coughs> right? uh, if we ask a John cannot lift his thumb because he's too weak, then we ask who is too weak. So again, this is super easy for human beings and super hard for for computer. So this is ideal task we want to test the intelligence of the computer. It's not the chess, because the chess is also hard for everyone. So we want to have find something which is super simple for human beings, but hard for tests, for, very hard for, for human beings. So we, we, we build a system for this, and we, we actually get the, uh, in, this is, EJK is a, the main, one of the main major conference on artificial intelligence, International Jordan Conference on Artificial Intelligence. We, we show our system up there, we, we get the best results uh, uh, at that time. Representation, inference, reasoning, and if we computer can do this, there's many applications we can do. And one application we can think about is to do social media analysis. We I, I, we talk about that a bit, and we also try to apply this technology to analyze the legal documents and all the financial data. Um, there's a many security applications, like a, um, if you want to test a, a detect the sentiment, emotions of people against a, some um, the, the, the country. So we can detect that to av try to avoid some some. Some some things we don't want wanted to happen, right? And also the chart system. Uh, there's a many other um, um, application we are conduct. We try to collaborate with a uh, uh, professor in Ingenuity Lab. Like uh, if we get if we have these technologies, like deep learning technologies, reasonings, and then if we have information from other sensors, like if we put sensor on the bridge and detect get some videos, then we can probably judge some things over there. So I'm trying to collaborate. We are trying to collaborate. Uh, the Ingenuity Lab is uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, inter um, uh, um, a lab, so we try to collaborate with uh, between us and try to uh, propose more project. So one of them we try to do is to, um, is try to uh, multi modalities like uh, learning uh, image and uh, and and word together. I think this probably also related to security. For example, we want to uh, if we have an image, we want to generate a description about what happening in this image. Uh, and also, if we have description and uh, image, uh, we can also try to ground it, like uh, which, which part of words talk about which part of in the image, right? If we have some security-oriented image over here, we can probably apply this over here. So I have a student working on this. Uh, like uh, this is the first problem was generate, understand the image and generate text. It's called capturing, image <coughs> capturing. The second task is called grounding. Whenever you have a description, you want to ground it back to the image. Again, remember, so we cannot, for dictionary, some words can be explained by other words. But there's English, there's roughly a thousand words which you cannot be explained by other words. So you have to ground their meanings to, to physics. Okay, so this is uh, some work we are doing as well. 
Uh, so again, so this is generally my talk. So we start from talking about uh, how to represent word and then how to do semantic composition. Then we talk about so social media. What's, a, uh, um, what's how to model the contrast meaning? Because it's, uh, it's, it's very important for model the same sentiments. And we will talk about some property about social media text and three subtasks, which is a, which is a major task of sentiment analysis for, for social media. Um, and then we come back to talk about a broader, uh, to broader topics about how to actually um, those problems actually related, like sentiment analysis related with uh, reasoning and also common sense as well. So we we'll talk about this in this uh, bigger uh, picture. And then uh, that's my talk. And thanks so much. Yeah.